we have done the measures of dispersion for ungrouped data. And how do we find the measures of dispersion for group data? And that is the main discussion in this video. And perhaps let us draft out the data we have for this group data. And in this set of group data, we have the mass in kilogram, which is the mass for 60 students. And we have number of students. And the mass we have are, we have five classes. And the first one is from 45 to 49. And then we have 50 to 54 kilograms. And we have 55 to 59, 60 to 64. And the last class we have is 65 to 69. And number, we, number of students that we have between 45 kilos to 49 kilos would be five students. And the next one is 12 students, 25 students, six students and two students. And this is the data we have for this group data. And from this group data, we are going to find the measures of dispersion, which are the range in the quartile range, our mean, our variance, and also our standard deviation. And how do we find the range for how do we find the range for our group data? In ungrouped data, we will use the highest value minus the lowest value. But in group data, we have many classes. How do we get the range? So the range would be the midpoint in the higher class. In other words, if you look at the group data we have here, the highest class we have would be 65 to 69. So we need to find the midpoint of this highest class and the midpoint of the lowest class, which is 45 to 49. And we need the midpoint as well later on for our mean. So how about let us build the column for our midpoint, which would be our x. And the x would be you add up the lower value and the higher value and then divide by 2. In other words, 45 plus 49 and then divide by 2. And from there you get 47 and then 52, 57, 62, and also 67. So we have all the midpoints. So this is the column for the midpoint for all the classes we have over here. So let us do the connection over here. So the range would be the, the midpoint for the highest class, and our highest class is 65 to 69, and the midpoint is 67. So in other words, we use 67 minus the lowest class midpoint, which is 47. So we have the value here. So 67 minus 47. And if you do the subtraction, you will get the range, which is 20. And range is quite straightforward, so it's quite easy. Um, so now we want to find out what would be the interquartile range as what we did in ungrouped data. But how do we find the interquartile range for group data. Now, let's have a fast recall. How do we get interquartile range, which is IQR? 
you know we have to use q3 third quartile minus the q1 now the question is how do we get q1 and q3 in group data so remember um for group data we need to use a very simple formula to get the q1 and the q1 would be equals to lq1 plus n over 4 and plus we would use a small letter n n over 4 minus capital f over f q1 multiply with c and the q3 is equals to lq3 plus 3n over 4 minus capital F over FQ3 times with C. Now, does this formula looks familiar? And if you could recall the formula for median in group data, you can see it's very similar. And the difference is just that the, the LQ1 here, the FQ1, and the n over 4. And if you recall, in median, we have the lower boundary for our median class. For Q1, we will have lower boundary for the Q1 class, the, the first quartile class. So similarly to LQ3, it will be the lower boundary for the lower boundary for the third quartile class. And n over 4 because we have the first quartile, which is 1 over 4. And the capital F would be the, the cumulative frequency before the quartile 1, the first quartile class. And FQ1 would be the frequency for our Q1 class. And C is the class interval or the class size. Um, now, I understand that and I believe there are a lot of doubts in your head now you may be very confusing oh that, that's a lot I, I i can't take it no worries let's do the example then you have a better idea so erase or remove all the memory about what i said just now and let's practice through an example then you have a better idea so we use back the same example over here. So we need to build another column for our cumulative frequency because we need this. So cumulative frequency, cumulative frequency. So as you could recall, cumulative frequency will be from the frequency column. A number of students will be your frequency column, right? So the first one will be 5 plus the next frequency, 12, you get 17. 17 plus the 25, you get 42. 42 plus the 6, you get 48. And 48 you plus the 2, you get 50. So I believe you have no problem with cumulative frequency as it's very straightforward, right? Now, once you have the cumulative frequency, we could proceed to find the first quarter right the first quarter now we would start from the next space here so we have more space over here now perhaps um we start from here so we need to find the first quartile first which is q1 and it's lq1 plus n over 4 minus capital F over FQ1 times the C. So LQ1 is the lower boundary for the first quartiles class. And we have in total cumulative frequency, the last cumulative frequency is 50. So to get the first quartile class, we need to use 50 divided by 4 and 50 divided by 4, a quarter of 50, you get 12.5. And 
and you can see that 12.5 is at the second class the first cumulative frequency just up to 5 so 12.5 the 12.5 data would be in the second class so this is our quarter one class perhaps i would use a green color so this is our quarter one class and lq1 is the lower boundary for this class so the lower boundary will be 50 plus 49 divided by 2 50 plus 49 and then divide by 2 so that we could get the lower boundary and the lower boundary will be equals to 49.5 right 49.5 and then n over 4, the n is the total frequency which is 50 over 4 minus the capital F is the cumulative frequency before the first quartile class. Before the first quartile class, it is 5, right? The cumulative frequency is 5. So we have 5 for the capital F over the FQ1, the frequency for the first quartile class. First quartile class, it will be 12, right? 12, that is a frequency. So we get 12. And C is a class size. And from 45 to 49, we know we have 5 data. So the size is 5, right? 45. Sorry, it's 5, not 45. So easily we could find the Q1 from here. So let's do the calculation. You could use your calculator to help you. And um, 12.5 minus, minus 5, you get 12. I'm sorry, it should be 12.5 minus 5. You, so we get 7.5 over 12 times 5. So you could use your calculator to help you to get the answer. Or you could just use mental calculation. So we get 49.5 plus... 3.125 and you add it up then you get 52.625 so that's q1 and you solve it easily right now so q3 is similar we will have lq3 which is the lower boundary for the third quartile class plus so instead of n over 4, you will have 3n over 4 because third quarter, right? Minus capital F over FQ3 times with C. So what or which is the third quartile class? So let's do the calculation. So third quartile means 3 quarter. So 3 times 50 over 4. And you get 37.5, right? 37.5. And that is the third quartile frequency. And we know that the third quartile will be at the third class because the Q1, the cumulative frequency just up to 17. So 37.5 would be in the third class because it's 42 here. So before 42, that would be the 37.5. So we get the third quartile class. Once we get that, we need the lower boundary, which is 55 plus 54 divided by 2. And from there, we get 54.5, right? So we have LQ3 as 54.5 plus, so 3 times N, which is 50 divided by 4. In fact, we have calculated this value just now. And the capital F is the cumulative frequency before the third quartile class, which is 17, right? 17. Uh, we have 17 over here over FQ3, which is the frequency in the third quartile class. And we have 25, right? So we have 25 as the FQ3. 
times with the class size and we have the same class size that would be five so you just have to do the calculation now and plus and that would be 37.5 37.5 minus 17 and we do the simplification so we get 5 here because we could do the simplification over here right now from there we could simplify and we get 20.5 over 5 now, of course, you could use calculator to help you, but it's sometimes quite fun if you could do it with mental calculation, right? Plus 4.1, and you get the value 58.6, and that's the Q3. Once you get Q1, you get Q3, we could find interquartile range, which is Q3 minus Q1. And you get 58.6 minus 52.625. Now, perhaps let me write at the next, next line. So it's clearer for you. 58.6 minus 52.625. So let's do the subtraction. 58.6 minus 52.625 and you get the value as 5.975 right 5.975 and that is the interquartile range interquartile range for this group data and you can see it's quite straightforward right so no worries and it's really simple for you to find the interquartile range and we will continue for mean variance and standard deviation for the next video